This is really important because we've been learning this stuff and one of the most important things of all of in all of mathematics is connecting new knowledge to old knowledge, okay? Now, you've been looking at tables like this in the questions you're doing, right? This is what we call a frequency distribution table because it tells you the frequency and how it's distributed. distributed. They nailed it, right? Okay. So, this is an example of a frequency distribution table. We're looking at some temperatures, okay? Now, what I want to do is connect this frequency distribution table to something we did last year, a probability distribution table. Now, in all likelihood, that's evacuated your mind since the end of last year, so I want to retune you back, okay? Now, remember, if you want to work out a measure of central tendency, like say the mean, okay? If you want the mean, then you're going to have to add up stuff and divide by, by however many things you got, right? So you can see here, n equals 16. I've added them all up, okay? And then after that, and I want you to look carefully. Oh, wrong way. This is how I would calculate the mean for this set of data, okay? I say there are two days that had 27 degrees. There were three days that had 28, six that had 29 degrees, and so on. Add it all up, divide by 16, you get a mean. You happy with that? So this is not rocket science. You've just been doing this, okay? But how does this connect to what we were doing last year? You can take this same frequency distribution table and you can convert it. Look carefully. Tyler, you too. Look carefully. You can convert it very simply into a probability distribution table. Same values, but look at what I've done. Same, same temperatures, right? What's, what's going on here? What, what does 1 over 16 represent? It's the chance, right, of, of picking out this day, that 31 degree day, out of all of them, okay? Now, when we were looking at probability distribution tables, that's a mouthful, we didn't talk about means, we talked about something else. It started with an E. Does anyone remember? Equivalence. Uh, close. We're talking about the, something that summarizes the whole thing all together in a single number. Don't you remember? It's actually two words. We talked about getting an expected value out of this. Do you remember that? Is this ringing a bell? Now, how do you do it? Well, this is how I'll show you, right? What you do is you take each value, temperature, and you multiply it by its probability. And then you just add them all up. Remember that sigma notation, right? So this is what you get. Now, hold on a second. When you go ahead and calculate this, you get the same number the mean and expected value. Now, why is that? I've got one last one to show you so you can see the connection. Look carefully. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. Okay? This is how we calculated the mean. Right? We said, oh, I had two lots of 27, three lots of 28. I added them all up, and then finally I divide. Yeah? But now look, that divided by 16 is what you had to do to turn each of these into a probability, right? Like 3 out of 16 is a probability. So that's why it's exactly the same calculation, just in slightly different order. So I want you to think about expected value and the mean as parallel ideas. It's just, are you dealing with frequency or probability? Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, everyone.